Welcome to the first in PC and Tech Authority's how-to series on home networking. In this video, we're going to look at the basic building blocks of a home network. Now, most people will have a few devices around the house that are capable of being networked, and most people also have a modem router or similar device that came with their internet connection. To get the most out of your devices, you really do want them talking to each other. Networking has several benefits. The most notable is sharing your internet connection, but it also lets you get more access to your data and it's the best way to make sure that all those disparate devices are being backed up, which is also important. The type of network connection you use depends on what you have and what your home's like. There are three basic types of network connection and we're just gonna go through them now. The first is ethernet. As a rule of thumb, you want to connect as much as possible via this wired connection. It does mean potentially unsightly cabling though. The expensive solution to this is to get Ethernet ports installed throughout the home. If this isn't an option, you can run unsightly cables around the house or look to one of the other technologies to bridge the gap. The second option is power line networking. This technology has been around for a while and operates in a similar way to ADSL, piggybacking over the power lines in your house. These adapters plug into a normal power point and create an encrypted link between each of them. Newer generation adapters quote gigabit speeds, but this will vary depending on the wiring in your home. As a rule of thumb though, this connection is a better option than wireless. Speaking of which, wireless is great when used properly. Because signal strength and reliability can vary, this is best kept to those devices that don't connect via a wire. Smartphones, tablets, and friends' laptops when they pop round are all perfect options, but you'll want a wire of some kind running between your PC, router, and any media playing devices or storage. Most ADSL modem routers have four ethernet ports. If you have multiple devices, this may be insufficient, so you'll need to extend your network with a switch. Switches are fairly easy to find, gigabit ones do cost more, but a 10100 switch would be fine. Try and stay away from hubs though, because of the way they're designed, they operate a lot slower than a switch does and really aren't suitable for modern networks. You will also need something that can display your media on your television. A lot of newer televisions come with Ethernet support, even going as far as to have direct access to websites like YouTube. But most people won't have such a screen, and you'll need to look at a different option. One is a media PC, a small, quiet system like this one, which uses an Atom Netbook CPU and NVIDIA Ion graphics. It only needs enough grunt to play videos, which keeps the cost of the hardware down. There are various Media Center Linux distributions that you can run for free on such a PC. For those who aren't comfortable with Linux, or who want easier sharing on a Windows 7 network, Microsoft has included the Media Center UI as standard in Windows 7, and remote controls can be purchased to work with it. If a full-blown PC seems like overkill, then there are also dedicated network media players out there. These are designed to have enough power to handle 1080p video streaming, and are a surprisingly affordable solution. Consoles are also an option, with both the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 capable of media playback. Be aware though that streaming isn't a case of finding network shares. You'll likely need to set up DLNA-based video streaming for the PlayStation 3. And that concludes part one of our how-to video series on home networking. Check back soon for the next five parts of this series.